Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about resistance and resistivity and the equation that goes along with that. So basically if you have a wire, a wire can be anything, really any metal, that's typically in the shape of a cylinder. And the reason why I say that is because if you think of a wire, and let me draw a better one because this is pretty bad. That's better. If you think about it at a small enough scale, that wire that you have is probably just a cylinder. Now, of course, wires don't technically have to be in the shape of cylinders. They can be in like a rectangular prism shape or any other shape that you can imagine. But almost always they're going to be in a cylinder. So that's the only thing I'm going to talk about today. And if you do have a wire, then it's going to have a resistance, R. And the equation for the resistance in this wire here with some length L and let's say the radius of that wire is lowercase r for the radius, then the general equation for resistance in a wire is rho L over A. That is Greek letter rho. I can probably draw that better. That's better. It kind of looks like a curvy letter P, but really what that is is the resistivity. Resistivity. And what rho is, is saying how resistive or non-resistive is your metal or whatever you're using for the wire. So for instance, if you're using a copper wire, for instance, then your resistivity rho would be 1.68 times 10 to the minus eighth. And there's some units that go along with that, but who cares? And you'll notice the resistivity is a very small number, like 10 to the minus 8th is 0 0.00000000168. Very small number. And that makes sense because copper is a metal and it, and it has a very low resistance. In other words, it's very conductive. It actually wants to transport the electricity. If you have something such as, I don't know, anything that's not a metal, soap, plastic, wood, that's going to have a much higher resistivity because it's not going to conduct electricity which is why we make wires out of metal. Go figure. And this area down here is the cross-sectional area. Let me write that down. Cross-sectional area. And so essentially, if you imagine taking a slice out of your cylinder, that shape right there would be a circle. And the area of a circle, I hope you all know this, is pi r squared. So then for almost every wire out there, the equation is rho L over pi R squared. The only time it won't be pi R squared in the denominator is if you have some shape that isn't a cylinder. Like for instance, let's say you have a rectangular prism like this. But even in this case, you just have to take a slice out of the middle. And what you see the shape you have here now is a rectangle or maybe a square. And so you still find the area, it's not that hard, but you're almost never gonna see this example, so I'm not gonna talk about it. So now let's say we actually want to calculate the resistance. What is the resistance in a 50 meter long wire with a radius of, let's say two millimeters and a resistivity of 1.68 times 10 to the minus eighth so copper and here's all you would do you would say r equals rho l over a rho is equal to 1.68 times 10 to the minus eighth the length is just 50 and the area you have to be careful with because i said the radius was two millimeters two millimeters you divide that by a thousand to get meters and that's going to be 0 0.002 meters, which then means when I plug in pi r squared, it's pi times 0 0.002 squared. And this is pretty straightforward. You just plug this in your calculator and you'll get an answer of 0 0.0668 and the units are ohms. And that symbol right there is Greek letter omega. I feel like I can draw a better one there. That's better. And so that is a very small resistance, by the way, which makes sense because wires don't really have resistance, again, because they're made of metal. Now, it's something that you should know is that this is a very easy question I just gave you. As a matter of fact, so easy that you're probably never going to see it on an exam. Maybe you'll see it once on a homework, but that's it. So then what kind of questions are you going to see about resistance? Probably questions that are more challenging, such as this. Let's say you have two wires, A 
and B. Wire A has some length L, some resistivity rho, and some radius r, while wire B has a length of 2L, a resistivity of 4 rho, and a radius of 1 half r. And what I'm going to ask is, what is the ratio of resistance A divided by resistance B? This is a much harder question, especially because there's a lot of variables involved. And the crazy thing is, your answer is not going to have L, rho, or R in it, which is amazing. So here's what I would say is the strategy for this question. First of all, the equation, again, R equals rho L over A. So for instance, if I want to find resistance A for wire A, then I just need to plug in the values for resistor A, which was rho, L, and R, just like that. Rho, L, and like I said before, area is pi R squared, so just pi R squared. We're already halfway done the problem, kind of. Next, we have to do the same thing, but with resistor B. Now, resistor B is more challenging because notice the values are different, so all I need to do is plug in these values into my equation. So for instance, rho was now 4 rho, L is now 2L, and divided by pi times 1 half R squared. Now, you have to be very, very careful with that 1 half R, because the 1 half R needs to go in parentheses because you're going to square both terms. In other words, what I'm saying is 1 half R quantity squared is really 1 fourth R squared because you have to square both terms. Remember that whenever you're doing one of these problems with, with variables and numbers combined, that whenever you square a quantity, you need to square both terms. So instead of one half R, it's kind of like one fourth. And so now I'm just gonna rewrite this for RB. It's four rho. If you want to, you can even combine the four and the two to make eight, that's fine. So it's like eight times rho L divided by pi times one fourth R squared. Now, frankly, I hate complex fractions. This is a complex fraction because your one fourth is in the denominator here. Remember that whenever you have like a one fourth in the denominator like this, remember that it's just the reciprocal. In other words, this just equals four over one, which is the same thing as four. So really what we have here is a four in the numerator, like eight times rho L times four divided by pi R squared. And yes, you can combine the four and the eight to give you 32 rho L over pi R squared. So this is RB. Now we need to do the last thing, radius A over radius, not radius, resistance A over resistance B. So it's going to be resistance A, which we said was just rho L over pi R squared, divided by RB, which we said was 32 rho L over pi R squared. Now there's two ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you the slower but safer way. Again, this is a complex fraction, which means we are going to multiply by the reciprocal instead. What that will look like is this, rho L over pi R squared, just the normal numerator, times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is pi R squared divided by 32 rho L. And the reason why I gave you all these variables and no numbers is because like everything cancels right now. Rho cancels. L cancels, pi cancels, and R squared cancels. As a matter of fact, the only thing you have left is a 32 in the denominator. And so the answer is one over 32. What does this mean in English? It means that the resistance RB, that resistance right there, is 32 times higher than resistance A. That's what that really means. So that was a fun problem. Now let's do one more slightly different. So again, we'll say we have two wires, resistance A and resistance B. This time I'm going to say wire A is half as long as wire B and wire A has a quarter of the radius as wire B. And so then the question is, if wire A has resistance R, just R, write the resistance of wire B 
in terms of r. So that's what we're going to do. This is a slightly different problem. We're not looking for the ratio RA over RB this time. We want to write the resistance of B in terms of A. And the way we would do that is first you would write the resistance of wire A. I know they said to write it as R. I, I will write it as R eventually. I'm just writing good notation right now. I'm telling myself in the future that, hey, I'm finding the resistance of A. And so that's going to be rho times L over pi R squared again. Why am I using variables? Because I didn't give myself any numbers. Oh, and like we said, this is equal to capital R, which I will remember for later. Now we're going to find resistance B. And to do that, I need to look at what did we change between wires A and B. Looks like wire A is half as long as wire B, and wire A has a quarter of the radius as wire B. How would I write that? So here's what I would say. If wire A is half as long as wire B, then that means, let's say LA is equal to one half LB. Why is it one half? Because I said wire A is half as long as wire B. LA equals one half LB. That's exactly what it means in English. If you want to, you could also write two LA equals LB. This is the same thing, just multiplying both sides by two. So both ways work. And we'll use the one that eventually becomes easiest for us to use. I'll explain when we get to that step in the problem. The other thing we need to say is that wire A has a quarter of the radius of wire B. Very similar. Lowercase r for radius I've been using all day. Radius A is equal to a quarter of radius B, which again I can rewrite if I wanted to as 4RA equals RB. And again, I don't know which version of this I want to use yet. We'll find out soon enough, but I'm just writing both because I think it's a good habit. Now, when I'm writing resistance B, look what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to write rho B L B over pi R B squared. I'm putting all B's in my subscripts here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because now I can directly relate resistance A, which I probably should have put A's here for all of these as well, because we're doing all of these conversions here between A and B. So it's important we label things correctly. So notice here, when I say LB equals 2LA, that's exactly what I'm going to write right here for LB. I'm going to write rho B, that didn't get touched. And then instead of LB, I'm writing 2LA. And in my denominator, I have pi times RB, which is really 4RA. So 4RA squared. So it looks like I wanted to use the bottom version for both. It's, it's not always the bottom version, but the reason why I did is because I look at my equation. I've got LB. I've got RB. I know it's going to be this equation because it's in terms of RB equals and LB equals. And if you don't quite see that, then just go along with me for now and maybe rewatch the video and maybe you'll see why it is the second time around. But now that I have this, I need to reduce this. Uh, by the way, row B and row A are exactly the same because I didn't mention any difference between them. I probably should have said they're made of the same material. That would for sure confirm that they're equal to each other. But since it doesn't say, we'll assume they're equal to each other. Now, it looks like there's a 2 in the numerator, like that. And in the denominator, like we said before, you need to square both things. So it's really 16RA squared. And this, of course, would reduce to... 2 divided by 16 is really 1 over 8. Rho B L A over pi R A squared. Okay, great. Now, I need to get it in terms of the variables that was used in A. Why is that? Because when I want to write my answer in terms of R, I know that this right here is equal to R. Rho A L A over pi R A squared. And it looks like right here, I've almost got that. The only thing different between this red circle I have here and the black square I have here is that row A and, and row B, which, like we just said, they're the same. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you need to notice that this is just equal to capital R. When it says write your answer in terms of R, that's R because there's all your variables. And the only thing that's left is a 1 8th. So the final answer is resistance B equals 1 8th R. 
Um, I'm not writing RA here, even though that is technically true. The reason why I'm not writing RA is because they wanted me to write my answer in terms of R, not RA. And there is my answer. So translation resistance B is one eighth the resistance of wire A. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you do have any questions about anything I did here, please post in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.